Let's start with the most simple Saints Falcon question. Who is going to start a quarterback? Uh, for what it's worth, I'm starting to feel like the tea leaves and the the kind of undercurrent is leaning towards Trevor Simeon. Yeah. Um, I, I I like like Nick Underhill tweeted, you know, kind of a vaguely worded thing about how, you know, every time Sean Payton was asked about Simeon during the year or asked about Jameis and uh, taste him during the year. He always talked about how you know Trevor Simeon's coming along, et cetera, et cetera. You get to Tre- Trevor Simeon's teammates' comments, and they were all very impressed at his preparedness, just how comfortable he was. Like Jake said, this is a man who started an yeah. entire season of football through for over thirty four hundred yards. So he's got a lot of experience, uh, more more so than Taysom Hill actually in, in that regard. And again, this is not based on any inside information or anything truly concrete. I just feel there's an undercurrent of feeling that Simeon is going to be the guy and Taysom Hill remain in his role. But maybe I'm wrong. After all, Taysom Hill did beat the Falcons twice last year. Yeah, I just think in this game with, with Taysom still kind of slowly integrating himself back into the offensive game plan at whichever position it's going to be, Trevor Simeon ready to go. It's true. He's coming off of a little bit of a heater for him, beating the Bucks, beating the Super Bowl champs. No, I mean, you're going to have multiple advantages in this game as well. Let Trevor Simeon go out there, see what he can do, and – I don't even really know what you do with Taysom because he's coming off a concussion. You got to be careful with him and his role either way, quarterback or. You don't think you as, just play him like you do normally? Well, it depends on you know where he's at right now. Concussion, obviously, with the way he plays, can can be troublesome because that obviously you get another one. Then who knows what your status? How do you never get any concussions? Get a big ass head, T. Bob. <laughs> Oh, I, I did get. Wait, well, I'm about to say there's probably just a lot a that couple. you just well, never like the reported. One, like the one just, like last week. Yeah. Randy McMichael. Yes. Yeah, he was exactly. about to have to play running back because I, for sure, don't remember <laughs> any part of the second half of that oh, game. No. Yeah, it's a bad one. Like, no part of it. And you played the But whole the wild half. part is, like, I was in the right spots. You, muscle, bro, when they talk about muscle memory and repping things to the point where it becomes second nature, there you go. It was just, you were on autopilot. I was, I was out. You Randy said he looked in my eyes and there was nothing there. You had coded your brain though to be a very functional great autopilot. Yeah. I mean, good job on you. You're basically like an AI programmer at that point. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we, we seem like we're in agreement then. I, I think that Trevor Simeon starts. Yep. And what's wild about that is that there is a ton on the line for the New Orleans Saints going into this game. First off, it's not just going to be the mental health of Louisiana football fans. So I do think that is on the line because Saturday night's probably going to be brutal. You know, maybe we hit the 1%. Maybe we hit the the parlay, the 7K parlay, and LSU somehow beats Alabama. Like, sure, but that ain't probably happening, right? So chances are you're going to be feeling pretty bad Saturday night. But what are you going to be telling yourself? Don't worry. The Dome, noon tomorrow, the Falcons will lose, and my weekend will be made. So there's a lot of line in that regard. Yeah. There's also a lot of line, look, this has been a very good news cycle for the New Orleans Saints. They've been praised. Sean Payton's been heralded as the kind of unquestioned coach of the year halfway through the season. All the fans are happy. The problem is, Jake, these are just the stakes of football. All of that goodwill disappears if you lose to the Falcons. It does. It does because they're <laughs> a, not a good football team. They're your rival, and it's yeah. in your building. Yep. Right, so all the things that you have built up, like you said, you got equity right now, and you'll lose it all if you lose to the Falcons. They're just, they're not good. I mean, I don't really know any other way to say that. When you look at who they're missing and how they've played, they're just not very good. They scored 13 points and gained 213 yards last week against the Carolina Panthers, 213 yards. Yeah, I, I know, because one of their starting receivers, our guy, Russell Gage, was in my DraftKings lineup, and mm. he didn't have any points. And, and Shout out be, Russell look, Gage. It, obviously, that does feel like an outlier offensive performance. I don't expect them to be that bad again. And they, that is coupled with the news. that They, they got the Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley news last week right before the game started. So this week, they've at least been able to process it. They're not going to have – for those that don't know, he's stepped away from football for a little bit to focus on his mental health. Obviously, wish him nothing but the best. From a more cynical, pure football approach, yeah. it's a huge boon to the New Orleans Saints. Calvin Ridley has given the Saints a ton of trouble in the past. He's a very good NFL wide receiver. And now you have a Falcons team with no weapons. I mean, I asked Mario earlier to name a Falcons receiver besides Calvin Ridley. And he did come up with Russell Gage. And, and um, oh, and then, can you name another one? There's another guy in there. Cordell Patterson. That that's, what I that, back. Yeah, that's, okay, that's what Mario <laughs> got as well. But, like, outside of that, there are no weapons. I mean, I guess Kyle Allen. Yeah, but uh, what? Uh, it's. Sharp. There is a guy named Sharp. Sharp is yeah. 
the receiver that stepped in for Calvin went, went Ridley. Went to UMass, yeah. I do not recognize his first name, but yeah. uh, yes. They went to UMass, was a good player there. High-ish draft choice for somebody else, not the fact. Impressive memory, but the fact that I find the memory of that impressive points out the problem for the Falcons, which is that this is a guy that is yeah, oh, yeah, wholly forgettable yeah. to the I mean, greater. They have Kyle Pitts, and they have Hayden Hurst. They have good tight end. What did I say? Did I say Kyle Allen? I think I meant Kyle Pitts. <laughs> is it Kyle Allen? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's all they got. They got, they got Kyle Pitts, right? Where's Kyle Allen now, though? Hmm. He's know. with Washington, I thought. Yeah, Still with Rivera. He, he, yeah. He's definitely holding down a backup spot somewhere, oh, for, for sure. sure. For if sure. Josh Johnson, and shout out to you, <laughs> Josh, by the way, if he's still holding one down. So, so as we said, a ton on the line for the New Orleans Saints. Potentially backbreaking type. Not backbreaking, you know, potentially just horribly. Like, it would, again, the ability of this Sunday game to swing the mental health. Just put yourself in the headspace right now. LSU loses badly at Alabama Saturday night. What happens if the Saints lose on Sunday? You're going to be absolutely miserable. If they win, then all is good. So we'll be playing that Keith Urban song because we're all blue. Yep. And, and 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 look, it'll be it'll be so a lot on Trevor Simeon's play. But honestly, honestly, and this is kind of what the video we released yesterday was all about. It's about Demario Davis. Dude. This team is about Demario Davis. He is the heart and soul leader of this team. He has replaced Drew Brees. He is the new Hall of Fame quarterback at the center of this franchise. And this is, in some ways, going to be one of his greatest tests yet. Can he prove, along with Sean Payton, to continue to be immune to these injuries? Like, can he rally the troops, and can he smash Matt Ryan? Because make no mistake, uh, I'm starting to have a feeling that Matt Ryan could potentially get crumpled this game. Like, they should be after his ass all night long. Uh, We mentioned the scoring last week. They don't have any weapons left. And even though, here's what's interesting about the Saints defense, Jake. Right now, they sit here as the fourth best scoring defense in the league, yep. second best rush defense. They're somewhere around 10 or something in pass, I think. But the point is, they've done this with having a mostly ineffective pass rush. Like, they have not been a great pass rushing team, but with the return of David on Yamada and Marcus Davenport, you started to see what they could be. Remember that Davenport. Anyamata Jordan combo is what caused that forced yep. fumble last week on Brady, right? So, like, all of a sudden, if you take this defense that was already playing that well, and now you add in a legitimate pass rush, what do you get? I think you get something very good, and I think the Falcons are going to feel it on Sunday. I think so as well. When you look at who they have, and we've mentioned their personnel for the Falcons, I think this is a really good matchup for the Saints. I mean, they on the outside just missing too many things, in my opinion, When you start talking about tight ends, the Saints have plenty of candidates to be able to cover even the best tight ends in the league. I think they have shown that. And then, like, Cordell Patterson is a a nice story. The fact that he's been a returner, he's been a receiver, he kind of found this niche as a running back for the Falcons. I mean, he's getting stretches, he's getting toss, certainly he's getting check downs. How how is Cordell Patterson the only person, it's like him... And Ty Montgomery, they just exist in this in-between that I guess nobody else occupies. Cause, them too. Yeah, That's it. Like, I don't know. Like, like we have a lot of Kamara and McCaffrey where they're more running back than receiver, yeah. but they're technically both. Rarely do we find the combination where like maybe it's 65% receiver, 35 running yeah. back. But that is Cordell Patterson. And he is a weapon. Yeah. I mean, he, he can be a mismatch. But again... The Saints have a lot of candidates for guys like that in that kind of mold, so you feel good about the matchups as well. Yeah, and, um, I mean, yeah, Quan Alexander is back rock and roll, and P. Werner's been excellent all year. Uh, I, I still don't know. I mean, I don't know what to make of Peyton Turner. Still limited in practice. Teron Armstead. I, 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 Teron Armstead's limited practice as well right now. I, I do want to give some love to Teron Armstead because everybody talks about Armstead being injury prone all the time, and I, I I feel you on that. I mean, he has got hurt a lot, but if we're going to talk about that, I also want to acknowledge this man has played injured a ton. Like if he is sitting out, it's because he is truly too hurt to play. This is a man who puts his body on the line uh, literally every single Sunday, and it and and plays with like some shoulder that he probably shouldn't play with, or an elbow, or a knee, or whatever the case may be. Teron Armstead consistently. Yeah. Shows up for his team. And, Jake, I think that one of the unheralded part about this Saints team is that when you look at affecting this switch from the Drew Brees era and then dealing with the the, the lack of weapons and dealing with the rotating quarterback uh, position, the rock-solid nature of that offensive line 
has paid huge dividends. And the thing is, yeah. they invested in that O-line, right? Multiple draft picks over, over the years. They continue with Cesar Ruiz, Eric McCoy, Andrews Pete, Teron Armstead. It was a concerted effort to create a great O-line. And although it's not always thrown up in the stat sheet because the Saints' stats are not overwhelming, uh, it is the reason why your offense has been able to weather these very stormy waters. Like Trevor Simeon had all day to throw last week and made his life significantly easier. Remember, no pressures in the 22 blitzes from the Bucks. First time that's been done since like 2006 or something like that. I, it's crazy. It's crazy. So the investment in the O-line led by Teron Armstead really paying huge dividends. I mean, look, we, we've talked about LSU Saints, LSU Saints. What happens on Saturday don't bleed into Sunday. Well, look at LSU's offensive line compared to the Saints' offensive yeah, line. It's very, yeah. What you can do offensively, right? We know it is such a key factor. And when you have a veteran quarterback like a Trevor Simeon, you give him some extra time. Well, look, there's a reason why he's still in the league. There's a reason why teams still want him on their roster. I mean, he's a veteran guy that it, he can figure the coverage out if you give him some time. So, yeah, the offensive line has been a, a huge plus for the Saints, and they invested, like we said. I mean, yep. they've got a, a right tackle that I think both you and I both think will be a Hall of Famer yes. at the end of his career, right? And they have selected guys in the first round, multiple guys. That's true. I in mentioned the first all. Round. I mean, well, actually, let's let's just go through them. Yeah, Armstead first round pick, Reed's first round pick, McCoy second, second round, round pick, pick, which you know still up there, obviously. Um, and then Pete, and then and then and I mean, then Pete, hurt, and then Ramchick. Yeah, I mean that's five. That's four first rounders. One second, that's five picks. In the first, second round. And those never feel sexy. They never feel good, okay? <laughs> no, they don't. But, but look at the dividends that they are paying. And even if you're mad about Andrews Pete, while he has not been as good maybe as those other guys have been, he's still been a consistent starter that could start at right guard, left guard, right tackle, left tackle. He has filled in and done well in areas that you have needed him. Granted, he's not the most dominant, but he's not a failed draft pick, in my opinion. By any means. So, um, concerted effort on the offensive line, paying huge dividends for this Saints team already. And 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 I and I hope that it all translates Sunday. I hope they get the win. Something else I love defensively, Jake, is that Paulson Adebo and Bradley Roby are basically 50-50 with their snaps now. So you're taking a little bit of the burden off of Adebo, allowing him to still continue to play and develop, though. And then Roby, who, that's what I was kind of struck by in the Manning cast. They were all, Brady and the Mannings were hyping Roby up. And I was like, it's interesting you haven't seen him more. Well, now you're starting to see him more, more time in the organization. He's learning what Dennis Allen is expecting of him. Um, man, Saints, it's up to you. We're all counting on you on Sunday to make it a good football weekend, beat the Dirty Birds in the Superdome, and all will be well. Let's start off this Thanksgiving season with a little cooked bird, the same way we're going to end it. All right, more off the bench. We're going to close out hour number one next. Keep it locked right here, OTB.